Hey YouTubers, it's Peter here. Just thought I'd uh, go through this little fish tank that I've been given. Well, not a little I suppose, but it's uh, small compared to uh, what I've been used to. The six foot, eight foots, four foots. Uh, you never knock back a tank that somebody's given you though. So uh, I thought I'd go through this one and just show you how or what I'm going to do to this one. First of all, I've already painted the back of uh, the tank, as you can see in the blue. I am going to put some um, DIY backgrounds in, just to show you how I can swap them. But uh, first of all, uh, just let me show you what I did to the tank already. Um, first of all, I got the, these are just corner pieces of the tank, basically old ones like that. They just go on the side of the tank, off an old tank. Uh, I have put or glued them in there in the corner. I've also glued them two little ones down there and one there which I'll show you in a sec why I've got that done. But uh, for the matten filter which I've never put one in the tank before but uh, I'm going to breed um, bristle noses uh, hopefully in this tank and uh, I don't want any um, strong suction from a canister filter sucking the little critters out. So. Uh, I basically put that in the corner, uh, face them that way, I think you can see them there. The sponge, basically sponge, was a big piece of square sponge. Uh, basically you just put that in like that, slide it down. This is, now, I've pulled all this stuff out of my junk and uh, I didn't have a large enough piece there so you'll have to excuse me, I made two little pieces out of the ones I had. Now I've cut that there and I'll show you what that's for. Basically I had any uh, any pump will do, any little pump and I've added a bit of VHAM tubing on and then I've had uh, some of this one so I can actually lift it and drop it where I need to. That's going down inside the matten filter uh, and that little guy there is going to poke out, hope you can see that, that there, it's going to poke out and uh, throw the water back into the tank. Uh, two things it's going to do, put the water back into the tank but it's also going to break the surface area of the tank as well. Um, so very easy, mat and filter. Um, I think they, they might be called a few other things but I'm going to call it a mat and filter. Hamburg filter or something like that they call it. Um, I'm also going to put the heater in there, so that's going to be out of the way too. So everything in here, in this part of the tank, um, I'm going to have stones, rocks, background as I said. Um, now, I'll show you why I've put those in there. Uh, basically, I've been using and making my own little backgrounds uh, for years actually, usually with cement. I've gone away from cement, I'm using a product called Pontite, uh, which I'll show you in a sec. But uh, this was my first little one for this one. And basically they go, I'm gonna drop them in there. So basically, and I'm gonna put a little pin in there to stop it uh, coming out, it won't float away. So the, that little fish tank will look like that. Uh, now, they're easy to change. So even if you've got gravel in it, you will be able to pull the gravel away from the back, simply, exchange it for another one that you've made there you go there's a nice little tree stump and uh, reeds plants a bit of water in the background excuse my artwork I'm not the best with art but uh, now here's, here's a here's another, this is the reason why I painted it blue in the background so they can put little bits like that in if you wanted to so that one was knocked up in about 10 minutes so um, yeah it wasn't uh, too much time put into that one that one is just to, to show you guys now people are like their bright backgrounds of course there's another one um, this will all depend on what you put in the tank of course and um, you know the backgrounds are nice but I try not to make them too good otherwise people will look more at your background than your fish you've got inside the tank but as I say this one's just a little breeder hopefully um, 
these little things may be changed in the future if I want to show it off. Now I'll go and get the pond type for you. Just hang on a sec. Okay, back again. This is the product that I'm using. It's called pond type. I don't know if you can read that, see that? It's basically for sealing concrete ponds, goldfish ponds. Um, that one is a limestone one. You can get a blue, black, I believe, as well. I used this limestone colour so I can mix. Uh, that's the colour of it there. Different coloured acrylic paints into it, if, uh, depending on how I'm doing it. Now there's some colours there. I mix that into it for the final layers on the top to give the colours. Uh, so I've got a few other colours there too. Now you can mix it into that. Now you can, once you make your 3D background, paint over the pond site, because it is paintable. Uh, and then if you wanted to, use another product from Pontite, which is clear, and basically puts, that, that's showing it white there, but it does dry clear. It basically puts a rubber seal, I don't know if you can see that, but it basically puts a rubber seal or a clear finish over the top. So you're putting like a rubber barrier between the paint and your fish, I suppose, or the water. Now, I've been using these products in my goldfish pond there. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's my goldfish pond. And uh, it works very, very well. Now, I have been using these products on my DIY backgrounds. Not these ones, but uh, others that I have in my aquariums. And uh, I haven't found any leaching of chemicals that change the water as far as hardness goes, alkaline acidity, acidity uh, pH levels, um, it hasn't done any. So basically, once you finish this, you can use it once it's dried. You can slip them straight in. No changes to the water. Um, what else have I got for you? I'll think of it, hang on a sec. Oh yes, of course. There's no concrete being used. So as I said, you can use these straight away. Once you finish them, they're completely dry. Um, you can throw them in and change them if you do a little setup like that. Now, some people may not paint the background um, and for the reason, if you put these in, uh, if you ever want to see behind them, leave the glass clear. I have painted it basically because I may be using something like these, this sort of thing, so then the rest of the tank looks nice as well. Um, I'll keep you updated on how the matting filter goes and uh, if you're very interested in these uh, and how I make them I'll, uh, I'll do a small short video of um, 3D DIY styrofoam pond tight uh, backgrounds, aquarium backgrounds. Any questions, suggestions, uh, improvements on what I've done here or if you've got your own way of doing this please let me know. Thank you very much. Okay, one thing I did want to add and I forgot to do at the start is uh, show you just the foams that I use. Basically this come out, and I keep using the word basically which I hate. Um, uh, this come out of a uh, microwave box. And we got a new microwave so I pulled these out of it. So you can use just your normal polystyrene, big pieces, cut it to the size of the tank, uh, like those. Um, but Anything, anything to do, and you can use a piece like that. Um, cut it down, um, shape it into the shape you want. You could even add um, little bits, but like this sort of thing. Add it like that, and then uh, you know, cut it, mould it, shape it, bring it more out, more 3D. Add other things to it, whatever you like, really. Um, I, if, on my others, have added things like this. Um, put it on there like that, mould it, shape it, put some other pieces on it like that, on the sides, anything you like really, and then just shape it into a nice decorative piece. 
make the thing more 3D, put pieces on it, shape them, anything. It's all your own uh, creativity really. You can use all this sort of stuff, silicon it on and, and uh, use that pond tight. We'll seal all the bits and pieces that you've got hanging out. Try not to leave any uh, silicon hanging out from the sides when you put things in like that. The pontite will fill up these gaps here if you use the pontite properly. Uh, the first layer is just a light layer and then start adding on. I usually put about two on uh, and then as I said you can either add the paint to the pontite uh, and leave it like that. It gives you a flat sort of finish or you can paint over the first couple of layers of pontite with your paints, create your own again, and then uh, put another layer of the pontite clear over the top. I've done it both ways, it works fine, uh, no problems at all. Fish uh, don't seem to be able to eat it or you know munch on it. They still get the algae off it when it grows. Uh, and again, if you've got any ideas there, just uh, make your own, create something. That's uh, what I'm trying to show you today. <laughs> Create your own rather than hopefully not copy my um, either bad taste or uh, bad artwork. <laughs> okay, thanks for that bit.